So I have a bunch of the code already written because we're really just focusing on how time works here. So I have clicks equals zero, time equals five because the game's set up to go for five seconds. Um, Tyson's score, the one we're trying to beat is 25. And then when I run the program, we'll see what's working so far. It sets the text to time left plus time. So time left plus five and then clicks and then the clicks are zero. I wrote a function which we're gonna use at the end and this function sees if you beat Tyson and your score, if your score is greater than his score, it's going to say you won and give some stats. Um, if the score is equal, it'll say it's a tie and else um, only thing left. If score is less than Tyson's score, it'll say that Tyson beat you. So we're going to start to code the timed loop first. We want to start our time when we press the start button. So I'm going to pull in a block for an event handler. And the name of this is start button. And when I click that start button, I want to start a timed loop. Now, all of your timed loop information is in control because really it's a loop. So I have my for loops in control. I also have my time loops. I drag this in. And if you look, this is running by milliseconds. So a thousand milliseconds is one second. I could change this, but I do want to keep the per second. Um, it looks very similar to an event handler where we have the function here. It's basically creating a function inside of a time loop. So what we do is each time that one second goes by, I want to decrease my time by one. So I can type time minus equals one, that's like plus equals one. So I want the time to go down one. And then I want to just reset the text to the new time. So that's something that's a little tricky. It doesn't automatically read it because line seven is not in an event handler. So I have to put that down here. So now it kind of looks like this just goes once, but this is gonna go forever um, because once you start a time loop until you stop it, it keeps going. Let's just see what happens. So when I press start, I'll start to see the seconds counting down. Now you'll notice it'll just counting into the negatives forever, which is not what I want. I want to stop it at zero. So the way we do that um, in the time loop, I'm going to be constantly checking for the time to be zero. So I want to type if time equals zero. And we set up our brackets. So here's my brackets for my if statement. Then I want to stop the time loop. So there's just a block here. Now this block, you actually can type a parameter in. Um, if there's multiple time loops going on, which is pretty complex to even manage, um, you can specify which time loop. We're not even going to get into that this year. Um, it'll stop any time loops that are going on. So I can run that now. So press start. And I should watch and my time should stop once it gets to zero the time loop stops and we're stopped there. That's most of what we want the start button to do. It's just starting that timer and keeping it going. The other event handler we need is our um, click here button. So I'm gonna pull that in. And the name of this button is click button. And from this point, I really have just been using these blocks for some of the more complex code, like the event handlers and the time loops, um, which I could also type, but I'm going to close that up. So first off, every time I click the click button, I want to increase my clicks by one. So I'm going to type clicks plus equals one. Um, and for now, other than the fact that I do need to reset my text. So each time I click, I want to see that updated. That's where we're going to start for now. So I'm going to press run and press start and I'll start clicking and it looks like it's counting. But if you're playing the game, you're just going to keep clicking. So I notice I'm able to click even after time gets to zero. So I do need to add an if statement here because I want this only really to work when the time is greater than zero. So above the code I already have written, I'm going to write if time is greater than zero, then I'm going to do this stuff. 
So it doesn't automatically fill in that bracket for me because I had stuff under it. So it doesn't give me the same template. So I do have to type that in. I forgot to put my parentheses right in JavaScript and need parentheses around conditions and then we should be good. So let's run it now. Press the start button. I'm clicking, but it looks like it's not counting it because the time was zero. The last thing we want to do, we have our time working, we have our clicks working, is we want to check to see who won. Now, there's a couple spots we can check to see who won. I could do an else here, but then that would, I would need to click it to see who won. We really want it to automatically check who won as soon as the time gets to zero, and that's controlled right here. So in our time loop, when we get to zero, we're going to stop the time loop, and we are going to run our beat Tyson function. As soon as the time loop is stopped, I have a parameter for the score. So the score is the thing we're checking to see if it's greater than or equal to or less than Tyson's score. Now my score here is represented by the variable clicks. So I am going to type clicks here and we should see some sort of report. So let's run it, press start. says Tyson beat you, you only had 23 clicks, better luck next time. I'm not setting up any sort of reset button, we're just trying to get the idea of how time works in this little app.